Hello, I'm Janice Riva, CEO of St. Mary Medical Center. Welcome to our 16th annual Hearts of Hope celebration and tree lighting ceremony in support of Community Healthcare System Cardiovascular Research. February, as you know, is National Heart Month. And so we gather together at this time to honor those who have fought and continue to fight so bravely against heart disease. Soon, the crimson lights on the beautiful Hearts of Hope tree at St. Mary Medical Center in Hobart will shine brightly in their honor or in honor of someone who fills our hearts with love and joy. Know that your participation in this year's Hearts of Hope event is truly heartfelt and more important than ever before as we celebrate virtually this year because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We thank you for your generous donations to Hearts of Hope that support vital cardiovascular research and clinical trials to bring advanced heart disease treatments to our patients and your loved ones. Cardiac care is one of our healthcare system's largest specialty service lines, one that has saved and improved the lives of many thousands of heart patients across Northwest Indiana over multiple decades. Hearts of Hope is also a time for us to thank our many caring and gifted cardiologists, electrophysiologists, and cardiovascular surgeons. These physicians repair our patient's heart and bring them renewed hope for a healthier future. Each year at Hearts of Hope, we highlight one of those patients and invite them to join their skilled physician to share their story about the extraordinary care they receive for their cardiac condition and the technological advances that are available through the hospitals of the community healthcare system. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Anas Safadi, one of our esteemed Community Care Network cardiologists and his patient, Marlene Jikas, a retired elementary teacher from Crown Point, to share her story of hope and healing. Each crimson light on the Hearts of Hope tree represent a life well lived, the legacies of our patients and the valiant work of our dedicated healthcare professionals to make gains to advance the treatment of cardiovascular disease and related conditions. As an interventional cardiologist affiliated with community healthcare system hospitals, I have been inspired by the gains we have made to offer advanced treatment with successful outcomes for abdominal aortic aneurysms, acute limb ischemia, atrial fibrillation, cardiac arrhythmias, deep vein thrombosis, hypertension, peripheral artery disease, pulmonary embolism, valve disease, and more. Together, we are transforming patients' lives through bypass surgeries, impella heart pump procedures, Watchman devices for atrial fibrillation, the micro leadless pacemaker, and other sensor implants such as CardioMEMS, a technology shown to reduce heart failure admissions. Amazing non-invasive life-changing moments happen here day by day. This is due to the proactive work of our healthcare providers and community healthcare systems cardiovascular research team. We offer a model of care to help save lives, improve quality of life, and provide multidisciplinary care to our patients close to home. Currently, the cardiovascular research team is sponsoring nine clinical trials, and with your support, their pioneering efforts can continue. Today, I'd like to tell you how transformative cardiac care can be. It is very exciting to share the story of Marlene Jikas, one of our patients who underwent treatment using technology in an area of interventional cardiology that is both new and the result of innovative cardiovascular research. Her procedure was essentially unknown 10 years ago, yet now is one of the fastest growing procedures in our field. We are honored to be one of the first hospitals in the Midwest to lead treatment in this area with both clinical research trials and new devices that are at the forefront of medicine. This technology and procedure known as deep venous intervention has provided a treatment opportunity in endovascular surgery that was not available before. Historically, deep venous syndromes were thought to be uncommon, yet current research has shown it is not only common, but extremely underdiagnosed, undertreated, and underrecognized by doctors and patients alike. 
the disease process is due to a narrowing of large veins that drain the legs or pelvic organs, leading to very common symptoms such as leg swelling, heaviness, discoloration, leg ulceration, or pelvic pain. It can even lead to clots forming in the legs known as DVTs, which sometimes can be deadly if they spread to the lungs and are not treated. The FDA recently approved several venous specific stents that have led to safe, effective, and accurate treatment of these venous blockages. Marlene had this diagnosis confirmed, and her subsequent treatment led to rapid, significant relief of her leg symptoms. The procedure is done in the cardiac catheterization lab using minimally invasive techniques with low risk. Generally, patients go home the same day or the following day with minimal recovery. Patients who suffer from this are both young and old. In my opinion, there is no area within interventional cardiology that has emerged in the last 20 years with the potential to help such a wide spectrum of patients. We look forward to continuing research to expand our treatment armamentarium within our hospital system and to be able to provide our patients with the most contemporary and state-of-the-art treatment for all of their cardiovascular needs. And now, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce Marlene Jikas. Well, I would like to inform you about my experience through uh, Dr. Safadi and uh, that he had helped me greatly with um, a leg issue that I had been having. They would often swell and there was a lot of discomfort. I couldn't sleep at night. I was very restless. In, during the day, I uh, couldn't sit for any length of time, nor stand. I just wanted to have some um, uh, satisfaction of a normal life again. And it was through him that I was able to accomplish that. It began, of course, uh, in the examination room. His opening words were, I think that I can help you, and I think I know what your problem is. He could examine uh, the iliac veins in the upper groin area of both legs to see if there was blood circulation that was going throughout my body and back to my heart. He said, what we can do is examine that first, and if I find that there is a problem, then I can put some stents in to open up your veins so that you would have better blood flow. And that's exactly what he did. And so the procedure was simple. Before you know it, I was back in the recovery room and he came and peeked around the curtain and he said, how are you doing? And I said, well, can I give you a hug? And he said, by all means. And I gave him a hug and I thanked him because I had had immediate relief. I just have overall improved health. And of course, it allowed me um, mobility because I wasn't really able to get around previously and um, continue to socialize and enjoy my friends and family. And that meant everything to me. Dr. Safadi in particular, working closely with him, he really got to know me and understand my problems. He had a plan and a solution. I was willing to work with him and abide by his guidelines because I felt that he felt it was just as important to help me as I wanted to be helped. He really loves what he does, and he puts his whole heart and soul into it. And what more can you ask from someone? As you just heard, there is so much to hope for and to be thankful for when it comes to treating heart disease. 
This is just one story from community healthcare system patients who have triumphed over cardiovascular illness and other heart-related conditions. Thank you, Marlene, for sharing your story. Thank you, Dr. Safadi, and all of our heart care providers for the expert, extraordinary care you provide to our patients. And thank you to all of our generous donors. Your participation inspires healing and hope when it comes to matters of the heart. Now, it's time to light our Hearts of Hope tree.